Welcome to the tutorial of how to draw a face. The next part will be how to draw hair and the last part will be how to line and color it. First you're going to want to start with two halves. Um, this creates the line of where the eyes go and believe me the eyes are the centerpiece of a portrait so you need to place them correctly. Um, I do uh, place the eyes a little bit too high on the sketch layer portion of it but the line I do fix it just prefacing it with that um so first you're going to want to draw out a circle this will encompass from the forehead to the nose from that circle you're going to come up and create a uh, the top of the head uh, the hairline I guess you could say um you're going to want to make it a little boxy uh but also don't lose its roundness because the head is pretty round for as bony as it is. So I try to place a nose on the bottom of the circle so that I can more accurately place my jaw and the chin. So I draw the, I kind of crisscross the nose and then draw a circle to be the little, little circle of the nose. And then I place my jaw and now Here's where I really realize that I placed the jaw too low. <laughs> placed the chin too low. So here I'm bringing the jaw down. I'm bringing it up to where it should be. And then I bring the lines and I shrink it down so that I can have that more accurately placed eye line. And then I bring up from the I give a little space on each edge of the nose to bring it up and create the size of my eye. Not everybody does this, but that's what I do. Because between the two eyes is about the size of an eye. I learned that mainly from drawing tutorials. I didn't really learn that in art class. Um, so it's okay if you don't know this. It's just something that keeps you more on track of where your eye placement is and makes it more equal. And then I'm just drawing the lines down from either side. Just to keep a placement, um, you might be able to forego a lot of these steps once you get really used to where things go. But I would definitely say at least for the first couple portraits, try to map out things like this so that you're remembering. So I'm drawing a line from the middle of the eye down because that tends to be where your smile, like the corner of your mouth when you smile is. Everybody's obviously different. Some people have bigger mouths, some people have smaller mouths. Um, I'm also mapping out where the chin is because I tend to draw the mouth too low if I do not map it out first. And then I am creating those smile lines. Uh, if you're not making a realistic portrait or semi-realistic portrait like this is going to be, it's not as important to have those little smile lines, but I like to put them in in a semi-realistic um, portrait because it creates more defined cheeks and it also adds a three-dimensional look to the picture. Otherwise, it's all going to look like it's all one plane. <laughs> and this is also another thing we're building the three dimensions. When you're drawing a mouth, you're going to want to wrap it around the teeth like imagine where the teeth are and try to wrap it around because I see a lot of artists just draw a mouth straight across and that's not necessarily how it would go you have to think of it as like a 3d space and a partial arch um it might even help drawing the teeth underneath I don't do that but I know that some artists do do that so that they can really get a feel for drawing that three dimension. And now that I mapped out the, well, this is basically, I do erase these lips. Um, it's basically just mapping out where the mouth is going to be and where the philtrum is going to be, where it fits naturally on the face. The philtrum is that little groove under your nose. And see, I place a line under that philtrum. So I mapped out where the lips were going to be. You could keep the lips on there if you wanted. I didn't. I just put a pair of lips. Now for the eyes, what I like to do is do sort of like a slanted to mimic the folds of the eyes rather than just doing the classic semicircle that a lot of people tend to do. 
I just feel like it mimics a uh, real life easier and also creates those folds without having to put a lot of effort into it into mapping out where each of like where it's going to be and then I'm trying to rounding it out a little bit and adding where I want the iris to be iris placement or iris and people I guess is a pretty big deal because um if you make them look off the side, um, it kind of makes them look shyer. It kind of makes them look... It's very popular to put female eyes off to the side um, in old portraits. Um, I like to put their eyes right at the viewer. But um, I just like to make them look right ahead. The only time I would not recommend doing this right ahead at the viewer is if you are creating a scene and you want the character to be in this scene. It's the same reason why, like, with movies, you're not going to necessarily have the actor looking right at the camera. So for the eyebrows, um, I didn't really learn this from anything except for, like, a video I saw, like, one time, um, where you're taking the corner of the eye and swooping it up to uh, the end of the eyebrow it's kind of like a bow like like how I drew in that picture so I just think that it creates like that tilt that you need to uh build up the brow bone that the wrinkle of the eyelid is also going to help build up and it creates that three-dimensional space that I was talking about earlier Here's me illustrated a little bit like how the brow bone goes uh, because again the eyebrow and the eye are not in the same plane the eyebrow is raised up just a little bit more and then I'm dividing out each like the peak of each part of the eye um, it helps to reflect it on the other side if you draw the line you could just flip it flip the layer but I would recommend against this at least in your first couple portraits because a lot of people struggle with drawing the uh second eye I guess you could say um so to practice drawing that second eye uh the same as the first one without copying it and pasting it and flipping it I would definitely recommend for your first couple portraits trying to draw it down the road if you want to flip it it's totally like cool even do it in your second I don't really it doesn't really matter but I would definitely recommend just for your own personal building your skill set to just draw it yourself at least the first couple times and now that I'm done that I'm realizing that my eye is not matching the right eye so what I'm doing is I'm bringing up the pupil just a little bit so that the eyelashes will just ever so slightly overlap that pupil. It builds up the eyelashes and it also makes the eyes look less intense. If the pupils are smaller, your character is going to look more intense. That's why a lot of times shocked characters have very, very small pupils. And I'm also realizing my eyebrows are a little bit off, so I just bring them in just a little bit further than the edge of the eye. And I'm building out the bridge of the nose. Doing guidelines is very much like sculpting, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, it's very sketchy and it makes it easier to plot out your more refined details later if you're placing everything in a more sculptorly, <laughs> painterly manner. And here I am bringing in the corners of the mouth. Going into a smile with lips. You could literally do anything you want. I went with small lips because I have small lips. And this is like a self-portrait. Um, but you could do big lips, big bottom lip, big top lip. It doesn't really matter. It's not really good to change the rules. Um, just And if you're drawing like a self-portrait, draw what you see. You know what I mean? Um, so with the ears, what you're going to want to do is go about your eyebrow or the corner of your 
I guess, the eyebrow to your ear in a straight line. And draw the ear if you want it wide, if you want it back, it doesn't really matter. Then go from your corner of your mouth, it goes to the bottom of your ear. So you're going to want to do that and meet the two up in a more slanty fashion. Because the ear is not a circle, it's more of a... It's more of like a coffee cup handle with like more angles to it. I know that's kind of like a silly way to put it, but it helps me remember and it helps keep me on track to not just do a circle. Because that is also something I struggled very badly with. I would also, um, if you don't really feel like drawing lines from the corner of the mouth over or whatever... I would just say a little bit higher than the, where the corner of the jaw is. And uh, if you're doing long hair, the hair is going to mostly cover the ears anyway. But I would definitely pay attention if you're doing the ears more pinned back, the ears more flapped out. I would recommend not trying to draw the side profile of an ear on the front profile of an ear. Because that makes a lot of like... It just makes the ears look very big if you don't pin them back just a little bit. It is a, something that a lot of artists struggle with, and including me. <laughs> Even now, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking it might be a little bit too big. But, I, I mean, they're fine. And now I'm just rounding out the head a little bit, making sure it looks good bold before I add any hair on it. That is definitely something else I recommend. All right, with the nose, what you're going to want to do is do like like a just a regular cartoon nose, like a traditional cartoon nose. And then off of that, build off a little bit of detail. I struggled with noses a lot until I just drew a cartoon nose and then built off of it. Because, I mean, what is a cartoon nose but a simplified nose? So with the neck, what you're going to want to do is not make it too thin. You're going to want to bring it down from the jaw into a slightly curved line. If it's somebody that's like thinner or if you just want to make it more feminine, I would slope it in. I would start it a little past the jaw and then slope it in a little bit. I would not try to make it too, too much thinner than that, especially if it's a semi-realistic portrait, but you also don't want, you don't want to push it too much out. But again, everybody's different. So, that's basically how to draw a face. Thank you so much for joining part one of this tutorial. And the next part, you're going to learn how to draw the hair um, of various styles. Please let me know what you thought of this video. Please let me know if you want me to speed it up, um, to divide it into less parts, or to include any other things that you saw me do in the video that I didn't explain. I look forward to reading your comments, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you!